Ahoy! I'm Nicole the Hunter, also known as just Hunter. Hello there, I'm History of the Flash, but you can call me JD. And welcome to Hero Story episode 111. Welcome. This is a Make-A-Wish episode, I guess. Uh, for those of you just joining us on a Hero Story, Hero Story is a podcast all about superhero, going from comic books to live action to all the sort of movies, animation, gaming, you name it, we probably talk about it, ranging from Marvel and DC. Uh, we usually start off with the news of the week, going over all the sort of news that's that's happened since last Friday to today. After that, we go over the comics of the week. This week's comics are, well, the big one is Batman 3 Jokers issue two. We also have Red Hood number 49. And there was a Batman Superman annual and a Batman Joker War one shot, I believe, that JD sort of read. Uh, yeah, ba- Batman the Joker War Zone one shot. Okay, there was also a Death Metal tie-in. I think it's called Multiverse Madness. We didn't read it, but we know a lot about it. So we might briefly talk about it i suppose but until then we'll go over the news of the week but before that we have a comic as we talked about last week and it is now up on indiegogo it's officially live and it is doing fantastic so far so thank you everyone who's donated so far you've done so much you've helped us so much just to make this possible yeah it's been it's been a real honor um you know we've been talking about this for months now so uh you know we've known all about it all along obviously making it and you know there's been a lot of stress of you know me and hunter going back and forth like oh god what do we set the goal at how much money (laughs) can we actually raise basically i'm the warrior of like oh no i don't think we can make it and hunter like full send let's do it (laughs) so uh I, i think it speaks a lot about our personalities but uh it's been it's been a, a great success so far. We're at, we're at about seventy percent of our goal, one thousand four hundred dollars out of two thousand, which is uh, amazing for just what are we four days in, five days in? Uh, we will uh, when this episode comes out, we'll be a weekend. A weekend, yeah. So we're yeah. we're doing great. Um, it'll be awesome to hit a hundred percent and hopefully go over a hundred percent. I was looking through Indiegogo of like other campaigns that you know hit one hundred and thirty percent, one hundred and fifty percent, two hundred percent. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Stride, our boy, uh, our boys at Stride. So, uh, yeah, so if, if, you know, if we could go over the goal, that's amazing. If we could hit our goal, it's amazing. It's just, it's been a great experience so far, and I'm very thankful to everyone who's been able to uh, help us along on this campaign and anyone who uh, is going to help us along on this campaign because I know some of you are waiting. And, uh, yeah, I just, I appreciate all the support. It's been uh, very heartwarming. It has been, yeah. <laughs> I didn't expect it to get this much in this short time. Because it's only been a week, basically, by the time this episode's out. So we still have a bit less than a month, I guess, at this point. But we're going hard. We're going strong. Like, we're going really fast. And it's really exciting seeing people donate practically every day. And we have a ton of backers up. We This book should be out by January. We're hoping it might be a little bit further than that, like February. But we're hoping January. That's our goal. Working on it every day. And extras is sold out thank you for everyone who purchased perk six it's now sold out so you, those who purchased it will be drawn in the book i've already drawn one person as of now <laughs> but you know process books not out yet but yeah we're, we're really excited to share this story that we came up with you guys so stay tuned for more details and if you haven't seen it go to our indiegogo page just go to indiegogo look up the price of hero pays or just look up a hero story if we have an account on there and you'll be able to find our book yeah. 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 You can look on Instagram as well. We have, we, I have the link mm-hmm. in my bio. I think you have it in yours on yep. the hero story Instagram. Uh, it's also on our website, a hero story comics.com. Uh, mm-hmm. You can get the link to it right there. So uh, very accessible. And uh, yeah, yeah. If, you could take a, <laughs> if you could take a chance on us, donate that we would very much appreciate it. Mm-hmm. It is a printed comic. So if you do donate, uh, depending on the perk, but if you do donate good chance that you will have a printed comic shipped to your door. Uh, we're doing just North America at the moment, but if you are living in Australia, send us a message at a hero story and we may be able to still provide a physical copy to you. Besides that, digital copies worldwide, I believe. So we'll send you. Yeah, and, and it'll also be on Comixology eventually as well. So Yes, likely, hopefully opening week when the book starts to ship up, it'll be on Comixology. For those who don't want to donate, but still want to read the comic eventually down the road, it'll be up there for hopefully forever. So <laughs> until then, thank you. And let's get to episode 111 of A Hero Story. Starting with the news of the week, which is uh, live action yeah. news. Miss Marvel has been casted by a known actress, Ayman Velami. I think I'm pronouncing her name right. She is a teenager playing a teenager, not a 27-year-old playing a high schooler. So I'm happy about that. A lot of movies tend to do that here and there. It looks like they're casting her to grow into the role. Probably going to be 
part of the MCU for a long time. That's what I imagine, at least. Miss Marvel is a major character in the comics, and she's only been around for about, I want to say, eight years now. Could be a little bit off there. Well, well, as I was gonna say, it's crazy that Miles Morales and Miss Marvel, who are characters who have been, existed for less than twenty years combined, I would say, are both making their appearances in uh various forms of media it's awesome uh yeah i wish i could say the same thing for dc for some characters who are more staples who have not appeared yet <laughs> well, <he was. laughs> um but anyway uh yeah no it's, it's 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 really cool that we're uh getting to see that in live action i'm i'm not too familiar on all the miss marvel stuff uh so i've read her first uh, volume we'll see i'm gonna have to do some more reading before yeah. the show comes out I've read her first volume, I've read Outlawed, I've read her in several different books, Civil War II, unfortunately, but she does have a good scene in that where she stops Captain Marvel. Uh, played the Avengers games, so she's very accurate and all that. Uh, I've read a little bit of Champions, so I feel like I know a decent amount of Miss Marvel to be able to understand some references that'll be in the Disney Plus show. Did you see... Uh that the actress who's going to be playing Miss Marvel, uh, someone found her Letterbox D account, which is like the movie yes. rating app, and she gave Captain Marvel a two out of five. Oh, that was, that was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I mean, she's being honest, and at the time, I'm sure she reviewed, she didn't know what was going to happen. <laughs> Listen, we, 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 we respect an honest rating. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Hopefully your Disney Plus series will take off and be very successful. More casting news. Uh, Hawkman was casted for the Black Adam movie. It is Aldous Hodge. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. Aldous Hodge will be playing Hawkman in the you, Black you Adam movie. You got two tough pronunciations today. Uh, I'm glad that you took it, not me. I feel like I, I nailed it, though. But you never know. <laughs> have to wait and see. Maybe. I mean, someone's probably going to message us and tell us that you're wrong. But, you know, yeah, that's probably. how things go here. Yeah. I'm waiting for it. The Rock put on his Instagram a little story of how it happened. The Rock saw his audition tape. Thought it was fantastic called Aldis, I think, to uh, explain that he got the job. He played it as if it was a prank call, being like, oh, hey, man, is this Aldis? I'm just a big fan kind of thing. But And the guy was like, man, who is this? And he's like, this is Dwayne Johnson. Are you ready for Black Adam? And I guess you hear him just screaming in the background because, I mean, he's, he's a superhero now. And he, Although it, this movie takes place in the past, Hawkman's one of those characters that lives forever through regeneration. And so we might see him again in future movies. Maybe he'll get Hawk Girl too, which I don't believe will be in the Black Adam movie. I think they're just focusing on Connor for this one. So we'll have to wait and see. But what do you think of the casting? Have you seen him in anything? I I didn't recognize just by name. I didn't look at his billing though. Do you know any movies he's been in? No, <laughs> I should have looked it up. Okay, I, I I doubt I've seen anything with him in it because I just, I just don't even I didn't even recognize him when I saw a picture of him. But uh, yeah, listen, if The Rock uh, says that it's gonna be good, I trust that <laughs> yeah i guess <laughs> trustworthy person uh we'll have to wait and see what happens filming should i thought filming was this week but because the rock was talking to me like oh i'm ready for black adam i'm filming something this week but he's filming a different movie so i guess this is his last movie until black adam begins production there's still a few more members of the jsa that are going to be in this movie that they have to cast so until then we'll keep you guys updated here on the show uh Nick Fury is getting his own Disney Plus series or starring in a Disney Plus series. Samuel Jackson will be reprising his role to play his first TV role in who knows how long as Nick Fury in a Disney Plus show. It didn't say if the show is going to be called like Nick Fury or if it's fully about Nick Fury. He's just going to be the lead of the show. Um, what are your thoughts? I don't know why, but when I heard it, it sounded very surprising to me just because he's just such a big actor so yeah. he didn't really seem to fit um like i'm actually trying to think of I, I just looked up you know some of his tv billings and the last time he was actually in a show i don't know i don't even see i, I see like law he was on an episode of law and order i guess <laughs> i think he made um, a cameo and maybe agent of shield i could be wrong about that i don't know yeah he was he did make a cameo in agent of shield yeah, I'm, probably, that. I'm probably wrong. <laughs> You're going to get yeah, corrected yeah. again. The cameo. So if I could just be making this up, though. Um, yeah, he is such a big actor, but Disney Plus shows they have the budget of a, a movie in the end. So I can see maybe why he probably got paid. He's probably getting paid a lot over this. Uh, I feel like Marvel might be putting a little too much hope on these Disney Plus shows, to be honest. We haven't seen any of the shows yet. Well, well and I think... 
the problem may end up being the oversaturation of the shows. So like with the Marvel Netflix shows, I thought like the early shows were like, you know, amazing and stuff. And then as they kind of kept expanding, kept doing more seasons, the quality kind of dipped. Oh, you know, I, I felt yeah. I felt like when Iron Fist, which I only watched a few episodes of, and uh, Defenders came out, they were not very well received as opposed to like when Daredevil and Luke Cage came out, you know? So I, so I feel like, out, yeah. so I feel like, you know, there's kind of like, you get to the point where it's over expansion and like, I don't know, are, are these going to be ongoing shows? Or are these going to be kind of like mini series? Because if they're mini series, I think it's a good call. If you're doing like something that's only going to be like, three to six episodes like i think that could be really good of like keeping people filled in the background of the mcu but if it's going to be like five seasons of nick fury (laughs) i don't know i feel like well right now their seasons are short i believe they are all six episodes or maybe seven or eight mandalorian style so like just really short uh i think anthony mackie said if falcon the winter soldier were to get a season two it would go under a different name yeah, obviously Captain America and White Wolf or whatever it'll be. Yeah, something like that. But again, season two isn't confirmed or anything. If they were to get a sequel, I, I, I don't know if they would even get season two or if these would just be one-offs. I guarantee WandaVision is just going to be a one-off. We're not going to be like WandaVision season two or anything like that. That seems like one story start to end. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're if you're doing one-offs, I think that's actually a very good idea. I think mm-hmm. that's kind of like unprecedented territory, but it's it's the same as like if you're doing a comic series, if you're doing, you know, like how Marvel does it now, where you know every character under the Marvel universe gets a six issue series at some point. I mean, basically, you even got the Amazing Mary Jane, so yeah, <laughs> Gwen Stacy. So you know, I, I think that's a very good idea. If you're gonna do like six episodes here and there for certain characters. That that's a very good idea. But mm-hmm. yeah, we'll we'll see. Nick Fury, not the character that certainly came to mind for me, but I think he does a good job as Nick Fury. So yeah, if the story's there. I'm for it. I just, like, when these shows were first announced, we got Miss Marvel, Falcon, the Winter Soldier, WandaVision, Moon Knight, which is being casted at the moment, and She-Hulk, and that was it, you know? And then they'll move on from there, and then they go back to the movies. But now they're announcing already new Disney Plus shows, and I feel like, what if these Disney Plus shows aren't as successful as Marvel expects? I mean, it's a full series that you need a streaming service to watch. It's not like you go to a movie theater to watch it. So... I, I got to think, though, that the idea is that the MCU is so popular that yeah. <laughs> Marvel made a billion dollars, Spider-Man Far From... Like, all, all these movies are making a billion dollars, right? Mm-hmm. So the, the idea is that you already have most fans on the chain. And then given the success of Mandalorian, which is from Star Wars, which was kind of a divided franchise, now you have Marvel, which is a more you know, together and, franchise as opposed to yeah. divided. I feel like the thought process is if we had so much success, success on Mandalorian we could repeat that six times over Mm -hmm. which isn't it's not a bad risk i mean it's 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 certainly calculated very very good point yeah you're right mandalorian star wars is a divided fandom but i feel like everyone likes the mcu except for like the film bros who will hate on it before a movie and and comedian of cinema yeah (laughs) they'll be like oh no no this is not gonna be good avengers and games is not gonna be good and as soon as it drops you're just like yeah that was bad well of course (laughs) you're gonna think that you've been talking for years how it's gonna be bad but Pretty much everyone enjoys Marvel movies, and even if you're not the biggest fan of like superheroes, I don't know anyone who hates Winter Soldier. <laughs> so there's at least something there, or like the first Iron Man movie. There's always going to be something there for people to enjoy. So I understand these things are probably guaranteed to be successful, even in known characters. Like I guarantee a lot of people that just watch the MCU and don't read comics, they don't know who Moon Knight is. Yeah, probably won't expect him to be. Well, 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 and I also think Moon Knight has a ton of potential to be successful, Mm -hmm. and and that's one that I could see going on multiple seasons. She Hulk has me questioning a little bit. I think it does have potential to go on multiple seasons. I know she's fairly fairly popular in the comics and has had some good series. So, um, but but yeah, I, I think more in like the only shows that should be going for multiple seasons are the ones that are kind of like you know, have, have that kind of potential from like the comics, like Moon Knight, I think could go multiple seasons. I, I think something like if you did like a Fantastic Four show, I think that would have so much potential. And could go oh on my seasons. God. So, to, to, to me, Fantastic Four, right. I think has already just not been done justice in the movies. I think it would be cool to do them in TV because I think you could expand that family feel so much more over a TV show as opposed to a movie. And I think that would be really oh cool God, to kind of get that, you know, 
the birth of of Francis, Franklin Richards is Franklin, like a, yeah. a season cliffhanger, and you know, mm-hmm. Doctor Doom stuff, and like, I, there's so much potential to do it over TV, and you could have them, you know, go to the MCU at some point as like a crossover, but like for their main, you know, stories, it's in TV. I think that'd be really cool. I could definitely see that. I could see like Franklin Richards being born, and then like he's born, and it's like instead of just a cliffhanger, it's like oh, they have kids, like every show does, and then it's like see yeah. season two. You have the kid, and then Doctor Strange shows up, and you're like, "We need to talk about your son," because Franklin, in the end, is one of the most powerful characters in Marvel. So yeah, or Doctor even, Sh- or even if you took, yeah. if you if you took some, um, you know, for, took some inspiration from the newer comics, if you have like a Charles Xavier type show up, oh, oh man, yeah, so cool. <laughs> uh, that would be cool. That'd be really awesome. And 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 going and even going, you know, off the Fantastic Four is the family feel, so it would be cool to do it like on a TV show. I think a lot of the X Men you know, stuff could be done justice in a TV show as well because there's so much mythos to cover and there's so there's much... so many. Di- different, like, teams and different, like, family bonds that it could be done over TV. They I could also do... do movies with it, but... Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, you mix of both for X-Men. You could have, like, your X-Men movies, but then you have, like, a new Mutants TV show. Not, like, the recent movie, like, recasts everything like that, even though I like that cast. Just new Mutants is of young teenage mutants trying to fit yeah. in on whether it's xavier's school for the gifted or it's krakoa if they go that route it seems the mcu is taking a lot of inspiration from the 2010 marvel comics recently which is cool like miss marvel casting it's interesting how we're talking about miss marvel casting here and we'll probably look back on this episode maybe 15 years from now she'll be the biggest character in marvel and here we are talking about the casting kind of yeah cool. well well and i think that you know their, their bet is and something that you're doing with you know a a film franchise where I think, you know, the, the TV franchise or the film franchises kind of have the advantage of you kind you get to see the story go from start to end as opposed to comics where there's really no end. At some point, it's going to go back to the beginning. So in a way, yeah, uh, you know, like something that's so satisfying with Smallville is seeing Clark go from, you know, teenage freshman Clark to full grown Superman at the end. So <laughs> in the Marvel universe, you see it start with Tony Stark and you know Captain America and the main Avengers, and then you get the next group of Avengers of which are going to be in film next. And then the next group of Avengers, which could be the young Avengers, you know, you, you could potentially, you know, who knows how successful the MCU will stay. I mean, everything comes to an end, you know, the Westerns never thought they'd end, but like, well, Kevin Feige, you could, he says the MCU is not going to end. So. You could have by, you know, 2035 or 2040, an Avengers team made up of Miles Morales, Miss Marvel, uh, Young Hulk, Iron Lad, like Iron Lad, hundred percent. Yeah, you, you could have like a main Avengers team that's made up of all new Avengers. Like that's kind of nuts. But that story goes from beginning to end. You can see those characters grow because mm-hmm. they're growing in real life. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. Which is why they're casting someone so young for Miss Marvel. And then eventually, when you get to that finale, let's say it's Secret Wars. They need help. That's when they could call on someone old, like old man Doctor Strange, King Thor, with like a gray beard and the eye patch and the one arm and everything. Assuming they live up to then. Because even if like Chris Hemsworth's like, I don't want to be Thor anymore, don't kill him off. Just be like, okay, he's he's in Asgard. He's, well, I guess Asgard's gone in the MCU. He's somewhere else. Like he's off screen. He's doing his own thing. And then maybe 20 years later, they'll be like, playing Fortnite. Yeah. (laughs) God damn it. They'd be like, hey, Chris Hemsworth, you want like a million dollars to come play Thor for like 20 minutes? I'm sure he'd be like, yeah, fine. <laughs> well, well and, and I'm wondering if like you do things of like, uh, I think recently in the comics they had the Tony Stark that was like the like the hologram Tony. Well, yeah, because uh, he died. Well, he went in yes. a coma. So, yeah. So, so, so I wonder if they would do something like that where it's like hologram Tony, you know, whatever, Robert Downey Jr. is done with the MCU, but... 10 years from now, you know, if the MCU's, let's say, struggling a little bit, you pump in some Robert Downey because, you know, it, it hides <laughs> people would bring people back, yeah. yeah. I, I would be okay if Iron Man came back in that kind of way. They already kind of went through the people can come back from the dead in that way. Look at Captain America Winter Soldier, how they, when Black Widow and Cap, they go down into the old shield base or the old Hydra base and they find, I forget the same, Red Skull's assistant's mind in the machine. Yeah. So they could do that with Tony, but not a Nazi. <laughs> so something like that. Even Captain America, although he's old now, you could at least have like old man Steve maybe 
cameo at some point, but I, I don't think no, they'll do that. I think no, I don't think they will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if anything, maybe time traveling, Steve. Maybe you came to this time and then, I don't know. They could always do yeah. something here. I'm not saying that, oh, they should bring Iron Man back. They shouldn't bring him back, but they have resources from the comics so they could at least have moments. Yeah. Like and, and the broader discussion that we've been having here is that you uh, there's a lot of potential of, you know, casting these young people to see them grow into the role and see them mm-hmm. do the role for 10 years maybe more yeah and some characters will they're they're meant to live forever in jason aaron's thor run he goes a lot to the future where the end of the world is at stake and there's only like five people still alive in the world and they're like thor dr doom wolverine and loki and one more that i probably can't remember but like those characters they're not meant to die they're meant to live until the world dies so that's why i don't want chris hemsworth thor to die i want him to maybe be off screen for a bit 10 years for like 10 20 years even and then come back as old old man thor whoever's wolverine at the time to maybe come back as old man logan again so we'll just have to wait and see it's it's cool seeing these new casting when i first started comic book hunter uh my first post was about dr strange being filmed so i was talking about like been in a cumber batch as dr strange and when we first started hero story we were just like joaquin phoenix is the joker like <laughs> Is that good? Is that bad? <laughs> so it's cool to see these characters evolve, even though I don't we'll see that character again. It's cool in that sort of way. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> next bit of news. Hawkman. Er, Hawkman. Hawkeye. Sorry, I wrote Hawkman next to Hawkeye on my news list. Hawkeye is also getting Disney Plus series. I forgot about that. Uh, he, they're doing a lot of casting right now, including Mockingbird, which uh, JD didn't know existed. Mockingbird was a character in Agent Carter that they decided, you know what, we're just going to ignore that. They're, they're going to Luke Cage it, and they're going to recast Mockingbird for Hawkeye to be a villain for an episode, maybe two. Uh, also for Hawkeye, um, Madame Mask, who is an Iron Man villain, will also be in the series. So they're just casting some villains at the moment, some side villains. I see them doing something with Madame Mask saying that she was in the circus that Hawkeye grew up in. Hawkeye's origin story, I know, I know you know it or not, but it's very much Dick Grayson. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I know like bits and pieces of it. Yeah, he grew up on a, on a circus. So I can see Madame Mask, just her appearance and her personality and everything be very circusy. So maybe they knew each other as kids, but now she's trying to kill him. So we'll have to wait and see. Hawkeye casting is going on right now. So I'm guaranteed next week's episode of Hero Story will mention another Hawkeye casting. So we'll have to wait and see. Um, now for the big news that just came out like an hour before recording here. Electro will be in Spider-Man 3, MCU Spider-Man 3, played by Jamie Foxx, who played him in Amazing Spider-Man 2. He's reprising his, like, he's not playing a new character. He's coming back as the same Electro that fought Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man. What? (laughs) It's, uh, it's, I guess it's my birthday and it's time for uh, me to light the candles too. Um, <laughs> listen, uh, this is, I, I guess, you know, when, when DC decided, hey, we're going to be taking anything that happened in DC media is now going to be part of the multiverse. So Marvel was like, oh, that's cool. Let's do that too. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah. You know, Michael Keaton returning as Batman may be a little more impactful than uh, Jamie, Jamie Fox as Electro, but uh, <laughs> I, I, God, I listen. Amazing Spider-Man Two. Are, there's a lot of aspects of that movie I like. I think the web thing is great. I think Andrew's great as Spider-Man. Gwen's death is tragic. I love Emma Stone as as Gwen Stacy. Uh, th- there's a lot of good things to that movie. Electro is not one of those good things. No, <laughs> <laughs> I think even as you, someone who uh, you know enjoys the Amazing Spider-Man two, unironically, I do. You know, you can admit <laughs> Electro is not it. So no, not at all. I prefer so, Green Goblin know, in the movie. Even he's not very. <laughs> yeah. So when I saw this news, I legit thought it was a goof because I thought, why would they bring back Jamie Foxx Electro? And Jamie Foxx is a very talented actor, musician, all that stuff why would you bring him back as Electro? Like, that doesn't even make sense. And he's the same character? What? Yeah, I feel like you could at least cast him as something else. <laughs> and no one would complain. I mean, look at Michael B. Jordan. He was Human Torch and then Killmonger, and everyone prefers to make Killmonger. So you could have done something like that, but not keeping, keeping Electro, which honestly, 
respect. <laughs> like, they're probably going to do him way better. I hope they kind of ditch the whole, he, he remember my name kind of aspect of him. Make him more just angry, I guess. Yeah, he's going to be angry, be angry at uh, Tony Stark for forgetting his birthday. Probably, yeah. <laughs> and that's why he wants to take out Tom Holland's money. <laughs> he's going to travel probably to this universe. I mean, he, you see him go through like wires and stuff in uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2. So I could see him maybe he goes through something that ends up being a PIM particle machine oh, and he comes into the MCU. Listen, the, the only hope that, you know, the Spider-Man franchise has given me is that, you know, between J.K. Simmons returning as, mm-hmm. uh, as J. Jonah Jameson and now uh, Jamie Foxx returning as Electro, the only hope that I've gotten is that perhaps in the cards is in, Into the Spider-Verse with Tom Holland, and Andrew Garfield, and Tobey Maguire totally. because I, I, you know, three years ago, I would have thought the idea is completely crazy. It would never happen. But now with everything that's been happening with comic book media, I honestly think it's a possibility. DC kind of showing the way, and then we got WandaVision, which is going to be trippy. We got this happening, which maybe he could appear at the end of WandaVision, and then that, that explains that. And then Doctor Strange's Multiverse of Madness, that kind of goes into it. So I guarantee it's possible. God, if Andrew returns, I'd be so happy. <laughs> did, did, did you see the, uh, the uh, was the writer or the artist? So, someone who did Craven's Last Hunt, maybe it was the artist who did Craven's Last Hunt, said that uh, he'd love to see Craven's Last Hunt adapted. And he would love to see uh, it done by Sam Raimi and Tobey Maguire. Yeah, um, yeah. He had someone cast a, a, in his head as Craven. I forget who it was. But um, him saying that, I was like, damn, that would be really, really cool. <laughs> yeah. He's, and then you said something like he likes Tom Hall and Spider-Man, but it does not fit the vibe. That yeah, like if, if you're going to do Craven's Last Hunt, it would have to be Tobey and Sam Raimi. And I'm like, oh, God, my dreams. <laughs> First of all, Craven's Last Hunt is my second favorite Spider-Man story of all time. So that would be awesome just to see in long live action and then Mm -hmm. add in my favorite live action spider-man actor and director oh man my mind would be blown i know their plan for spider-man 4 was mysterio and vulture right uh yeah and then well well there's like different plans like at at one point they had a plan for four five and six where they were going to shoot five and six like back to back and it was going to have like sinister six and you're going to do craven eventually so there were a lot of plans on the table and i'm sure even though Sam Raimi loves like the 60s Spider-Man, I'm sure he would, you know, love to do Craven's Last Haunt and mm-hmm. kind of redeem himself for Spider-Man 3 where he didn't have his vision. So I think Craven would be better suited for that style. Like that that world of regular everyday New York as opposed to several villains all at once. Because that works for the MCU perfectly fine. But for new, like Sam Raimi's New York, you could go to New York City today and be like, I'm in Sam Raimi's New York. <laughs> like you don't see an Avengers you Tower. Mess with one of us, you mess with all of us. <laughs> I mean, you don't see like Avengers Tower, or you don't see any like Iron Man flyby. Older than my son. Yeah, you don't go to a cafe and Ashley Johnson's like, "Oh, you waiting for the big man, Iron Man? He flies by here sometimes." (laughs) Like, no, no, you sit at a cafe. It's like, what can I get you? (laughs) Well, technically, if you sit in a cafe in in Sam Raimi's Spider Man verse, you get a Doc Ock car thrown through the window as Tobey Maguire tackles you and you know saves you. I would love that. (laughs) Tobey Maguire tackles me. I don't care if I break a shoulder from that. He can do it. Like you're, you're Spider Man. <laughs> this is getting way off topic, but yeah, basically Spider Verse could happen, and within way, that, way off topic, <laughs> maybe we could be like, if that happens, I could see Tobey Maguire's Spider Man be more like Spider Verse Peter, where he's older, maybe doesn't wear the suit as often. As often, I don't want him to go like Crisis on Infinite or Smallville, where it's like, nah, I hung it up, kind of thing. Oh God, <laughs> I, I don't want that. I want it to be that has no effect on me since I gave up my powers <laughs> i'd much rather him be like no nah, I, I just wear it when i hear danger but i don't go out on patrol anymore i think that's fine because Tommy mcguire is like what 95 years old now or something like that uh, i don't know <laughs> anyways uh on to the next spider-man news this is gaming news insomniac i i said the name wrong but i'm not going to correct myself Spider-Man PS4 is getting a remaster on PS5, which is great. They're going to update the graphics, going to add a lot of like reflection effects on the buildings. It looks amazing. They're adding the, the Amazing Spider-Man suit as well, and possibly the other ones too, but we'll get to that in a second. They changed Peter Parker's face. They, they changed his model completely to a different guy. He looks like Tom Holland, but somehow younger to me. <laughs> Tom Holland plays a 15-year-old, but he looks younger than that. <laughs> They did, th- okay, before before we get into, like, 
how could they do this? Because I'm, I'm sure you'll say that. <laughs> You're on my side here. They did this because uh, I guess the original face was a little complicated for mocap. Because they have like a different person doing mocap, I guess. And they're just like, man, it's difficult to do some animations. So they changed his face for the remaster. And he will look like this continuing forward for Spider-Man 2, which is happening, like Spider-Man PlayStation 2. And then they are also, if he, if Peter does appear in Spider-Man Miles Morales, which I guarantee he will at least have a cameo, he will have this face. So it's for good. So if he played Spider-Man PS4, that Peter Parker's gone. Why? Well, I know why, but come on. <laughs> Look how they massacred my boy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so so I think I saw Gavin post about this first. Uh, it was like a story post, like what, like in all caps, like what did they do? Yeah, and I was like, I was like, oh, they changed Spider Man's face. And then I may have seen one of the biggest Instagram shit shows that I have seen since like uh, MC lost the rights to Spider Man, where every single post that I saw in the story was about. It. I was just like, what, what is going on here? People love their Spider Man. <laughs> I mean, it's it's crazy. So admittedly i never thought the face from spider-man 4 was or from spider-man ps4 was that great but you got used to it because you know it's the game yeah i never thought it was like that great i actually thought the concept art i don't know if you've ever seen the concept art for the game I thought the concept like stubble, art for right Peter, yeah i thought that was a way better look yeah so yeah. so ultimately i was never too in love with the look they had for the game now that okay. they're changing it i don't like this one any better i think this is worse because I, I do think he looks young he d- looks like a walmart brand tom holland which mm-hmm. is odd uh I, the, too many memes that i've seen of like you're telling me this guy was pulling black cat and mary jane and <laughs> he definitely was not no <laughs> uh yeah i don't know this was it, it's definitely an odd decision but uh insomniac on twitter was like you've trusted us this far you've trusted us for every decision like why not keep trusting us now and i get that and they were like you know we hear you like we hear your problems with it but just because we hear your problems with it doesn't mean it's gonna change like this is it so we fans got sonic to change for the sonic movie so come on we got this <laughs> i i you know it, I, even the actor who played the original spider-man in like the face was like uh like responding to fans <laughs> like you guys are the best and all that but yeah oh, this is definitely a weird switch up it's odd like if it was like okay you show trailers and then when the game releases it's different it's fine for like Spider-Man PS4 but the fact that we've spent so many hours with this character I beat the game twice so I played through this through this Peter Parker twice and you see him go through this traumatic event you see him smile you see him cry you see him go through pain and go through all this and then suddenly it's like it's a recast it's a little like the voice is gonna be the same but it's just odd to me i understand like the the original peter parker wasn't like this is the perfect peter parker design or anything like that but he looked like a 23 year old which is who he is he looked like a 23 year old who was financially unstable spent his nights being up half the night punching people and getting punched like he looked like your typical teenage or 23 year old that was stressed. He he looks stressed. No way. Wait, wait. Twenty three year old that was stressed. Uh, isn't that the comic book hunter? Uh, that is me. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm twenty two. Spend, uh, spend the nights soon. of Spider Man. Wait, wait a second. Uh oh. oh. <laughs> I've exposed you. I had yeah. <laughs> he had like the bags under his eyes a little bit, and but he he looked like Peter to me, in a way more than Tom Holland does. So he did kind of have that Tobey Maguire kind of face too, like with the. <laughs> with the tired looking eyes, <laughs> but he had the, the Andrew Garfield kind of facial structure, but at the same time he had no Tom Holland to him, I guess. But this new guy has like, it looks like Tom Holland in a way, but it just, it's kind of disappointing. I, 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 I wouldn't be surprised if we get at least some kind of upgrades from like where he looks now, like where the like, all right, you know, this is where the fan backlash is, even though we're not gonna switch back to the original, maybe we can make his face look a little better. Like I saw someone, uh, changed up his hair a little bit. I think they made his hair like a little bit longer. Yeah, his hair's very short. Right changed now. up the face a little bit, so mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if Insomniac tries to do some changes to try to, you know, back off some of the fans. But yeah, petitions are out right now to get the original Spider-Man face back. Uh, if you had to put odds on, you know, will they reverse this decision? Do you think there's a chance or no? I think there's a chance, but I I don't think it'll happen in the end. But if it did happen, I wouldn't be like, whoa! I can't believe that happened. I'd be like. 
kind of like, yay, it happened. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd put it very low. I'd say maybe a 10 to 20% chance that they go back, but I think very low because they've, they've kind of took their stand on Twitter yesterday where they're like, like you've trusted us through everything, trust us now. So we'll true. See. They have done good. They added the Tasm suit, which looks great. I mean, I guess I already said that in the news, but they're adding, uh, they're probably going to add the second one as well. I hope so, because I think that's the best. Yeah, I would prefer to see the second one as opposed to the first mm-hmm. one. And pro- they, they said three suits, so three amazing suits. So the Amazing Spider-Man the, the starter, The starter one when he's got like the gla- sunglasses? Yeah, Vigilante suit, it's known as. So I can yeah. see that happening for sure. But yeah, Spider-Man PS4 remaster comes out the day the PlayStation 5 comes out, I believe. So November 12th. So stay tuned. Um, for comic news, Grant Morrison is back at DC. Remember, like three weeks ago, when we said he's no longer at DC. <laughs> Grant Morrison is back about that. <laughs> with, uh, Yannick Pequete. I probably pronounced that wrong. Uh, and they will be making Wonder Woman Earth One Volume Three. They both made uh, teamed up together for Earth One Volume One or Earth One Volume Two. They're making a third one. They want to make it a trilogy, and they say this is going to be their last one in the Wonder Woman Earth One volumes just to close off the series have you read wonder woman earth one no the, i i've read very little earth one i've read uh superman earth one and i've read only the first volume of batman earth one so i have okay. a lot of earth one reading to go through yeah I'm um, offended. <laughs> so, something i would say about earth one and obviously not having read a lot of it maybe i don't have the highest grand to stand to gr- ground to stand on i was confusing my words speaking too quick uh <laughs> You know, I feel like Earth One kind of has the potential to be the ultimate universe, but in a different aspect where it's not issue by issue, it's volume by volume. I think that's a very interesting premise to do in comics where you're kind of getting that. more full stories. So I feel like they had that kind of advantage on the ultimate universe where they could have done things differently. And for, at least from what I've read from, you know, Superman Earth One and Batman Earth One, it is like a different aspect of these characters. I feel like they just haven't kind of put in the, I don't know, the effort and maybe the sales just aren't there when they're just in trade and they're not a single issue. But like, I I feel like they could have had like a connected universe. Like, are the Earth One titles connected? Uh, You know, the ones that I read, I don't remember. I was about to ask you that. I mean, the... Like all the Wonder Woman ones are connected, obviously, but I. But but I'm saying, like, does the Teen Titans one connect to the Batman one, or like, does the I you know, don't does the Superman so. one connect to the Green Lantern one? Oh like, wait, does Teen Titans have Robin in it, like a Robin? I, I can't remember. So. I've never read Teen Titans Earth one, but I, think I it haven't does. either. If it does, then no, it wouldn't connect because Batman Earth one they don't have any Robins in it, and it's like mm-hmm. a new take on his origin, basically. So. No, I don't think they do connect. And plus, Earth One Batman is very much like a grounded Gotham City where superheroes aren't a thing. So maybe this just takes place beforehand, but from Wonder Woman Superman. But yeah, as far as I know, they're not connected. And yeah, I, I just pulled yeah. up a uh, a Reddit posting where someone was asking. And they said that they uh, do not connect at all. Okay, yeah, but, I figured. But, but if, they could. They could just say they are connected, and I would be like, okay, well say batman earth one takes place in the past but but my, my overall point of this was like if they would have done it a little differently they could have had like one for each character where you kind of redo origins in the modern sense and that's where you could bring in new readership mm-hmm. because i felt like superman earth one uh, have you read superman earth one i've read volume one so so i feel like it's a lot more like the superman that we see in man of steel with henry cavill like that's oh, kind yeah. of the vibes i get from it so i feel like you could have used that to try to get more people into Superman, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. Like, it's, it's a modern retelling of Superman's origin story where he's a little different. And same thing with, you know, Batman. It's like but, a modern retelling. So I feel like, you know, those stories can be used to kind of hook readers in. So I don't yeah, know. I yeah. feel like Earth One, and granted, I haven't read a lot of it, but I feel like Earth One lacks what its potential builds for it. I mean, they're good for the most part. Batman Earth One is my favorite Batman story ever. I love Green Lantern Earth One. I just feel like you're right for potential. Volume two's coming out soon, by the way, on Green Lantern. It's already out, actually. Oh, is it? Oh. Yeah, I found out last week. <laughs> I had no idea. Oh wow! Out. So yeah, lack of advertising. There's one. 100. percent 100. percent Earth Two or Earth One Volume Two came out, but I saw it in a comic store uh, last Wednesday. I was like, "What the hell is this?" Oh wow! I didn't get it, but I plan on getting it because I love Volume One. But they don't come out often. I feel like they get made often, but they don't come out often. Apparently, Batman Earth 1 Volume 
three has been done for like been worked years. on for like three years with Gary Frank. Yeah, apparently it's done. Though Gary Franks has said it is good to go. Uh, he's just waiting for the solicitations. Oh, he says it's completely weird. done and it should release soon. He said like a year ago. Um, Aquaman Earth One by Francis Monopoly. He was writing and doing the art for it. Been confirmed since I think. But but then he said that it got reworked into whatever five G was going to be. But now the five G is gone. Now maybe it's being reworked back into Earth One. It's the idea is like it was announced five years ago. <laughs> we have, yeah, we haven't seen anything for it. Yeah, and they've never done like a Flash Earth One or even like rumors no. of a Flash Earth One, which oh, so heard much potential. So, oh, much potential. Let me write it. Let me write it. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't heard anything for that yet. So yeah, I mean these books they they're getting made. It's just we never hear anything about it. And again, like of advertisement, Earth One for or. Oh, this is a lot of numbers. Green Lantern Earth One Volume Two is out, but I never saw yeah, anything I, I, saying I it was out. I didn't even know it was out. Like I thought it was still just coming out. I didn't realize. Yeah, so. and Earth terrible one, advertisement. I, I got Earth One Volume One of Green Lantern at a comic convention. I just saw it on a shelf and I was like, "Oh my god, this is out!" So I bought it and then I read it and I thought it was great. So, and and this goes back to my further point of that I made for probably years now that. I don't understand how DC comics could have like 10 million followers on Instagram and not really promote comics. They'll sometimes post like a big comic of the week with a big moment and be like, what did you think of flash 762? Yeah. But they don't do enough with like trades coming out. You know, they have separate accounts for different DC stuff. I feel like, like their toy account. And yeah. Yeah. So I feel like you could do like a separate DC account for like, dc collected editions or dc graphic novel whatever, whatever you want to yeah, call it and, yeah. and it's kind of like a promotional base of like like you know the new ones that are coming out like oh green lantern earth one volume two boom got it on the first try it's coming out <laughs> and then you know like oh uh, green lantern kyle rayner volume two just came out you know like mm-hmm. so people will actually know when these trades are coming out i mean i've talked to people that were like wait they reprinted the mark wade flash run and i'm like yeah we're seven books in and it's like you're missing core audience who would definitely buy the books because you're not – people just don't know. I mean, I've done – I've literally done advertisements on my own for it where it's like, hey, Young Justice book five is coming out. I really want them to print the rest of the series. Please buy it. Yeah, and I'm exactly. doing free advertising for them just because I want to see the book made. But, like, why are they not post- – you know how many fans there are of the old Young Justice run? Why would you not post that on your Instagram? You have so many followers. Even mm-hmm. if you get a piece of them to get the book, it's, it's that many more sales. Yeah, and at this point, when you see like an old comic and it has like the new DC logo, which has only been around like five years, I want to say, I'm like, oh my god, this was reprinted. I just bought, rebought Batman Year One with the new DC logo on it. When I first read it, it had the not even the one with like the the page turning. I had the one before that with the stars. That was the first time I read Batman Year One. So the fact that it gets printed so often but not talked about, you don't is know about odd. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's odd. Just look at the logo to see if it's new or not. Really. Yeah. yeah, I've always found it weird the way they treat their trade division. And, like, they wonder why, you know, trades don't sell well after a volume one. People don't know about them. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, it, and, and it's sad that, you know, certain trade runs have gotten cut short. You know, uh, Tim Drake's Robin series got five trades canceled. Uh, Chuck Dixon's Birds of Prey, three trades canceled. Uh, you know, the, the list goes on. Kyle Rayner, Green Lantern, two trades canceled. You know, there, there's so many books that are – fantastic runs that have a big fan base from when you know there's a reason they were big in the 90s that that fan base still loves those comics and i'm sure would like to read them you know more accessibly but people don't know about them and this all ties back into earth one of damn earth one could be cool (laughs) yeah exactly marvel's not off the hook either with this try looking for captain america by brubaker ed Ed brubaker it's impossible and I, i don't understand why it's one of the greatest marvel 2000s runs and yet there's like select trades of certain stories and it's like there's trades but it's like volume one and then technically it says volume two but it's really volume like seven because you just skip so many issues yeah it's 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 terrible the way they do that yeah no i 100 percent agree I, I i think i think they're under you know undermining or undervaluing what the trades could be worth to them because the trades are much more accessible to new readers and casual readers i think if you're in a barnes and noble or you know, I don't know what the Canadian bookstores are, but like, you know, like a red, uh, yeah, <laughs> chapters. Uh, but like Barnes and Noble is a pretty big bookstore in America. So like, but I'm saying the like local chapters. Yeah. 
Yeah, so like a local bookstore, you know, like at, at every Barnes and Noble, you pretty much got a Starbucks inside. So you go inside to get a Same cup of coffee. Same with chapters. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. So you, so, you, so you go inside, you get a cup of coffee and, you know, you're looking at the books while you're drinking your coffee and you come across the graphic novels and you see all these, you know, DC and Marvel books. There's and tons. Like, usually. hey, yeah. hey, I used to read this run 20 years ago. Like, it'd be great to read it again. Boom, bye. Like, it's, ah, there's so much yeah. potential. I think nowadays they're printing all the new stuff pretty much always. Well, well, and that's another thing that I thought it's kind of weird where you print every single book, every six issues. Are there certain books that maybe don't need to be printed in trade? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there probably are. Did but... Damian Wayne's Teen Titans, you know, Teen Titans Rebirth need to be printed into so many trades? Probably not. <laughs> no, that's a good point. Yeah. I but... can't imagine they were selling too well. But at the same time, it's good to have modern trades done. I just read seven years worth of Thor comics all in a row because they're all collected in trade and it was awesome it was a great experience and even then some characters every single run they've had have trades like daredevil almost every single daredevil run you can collect in trade which is fantastic can't do that for young justice though so well just... well is assuming this book comes out in november you will be able to collect every single <laughs> assuming, young justice, yeah please don't cancel it uh but you know i i, I totally agree with you it's weird because you know uh the, the idea of trades coming out after the issues came out really started with Vertigo, which is the DC imprint that did like Sandman yes. and stuff. Mm -hmm. They were the first ones that did books like, you know, trades of certain books. So people like could catch John up. Constantine. And yeah. And, and Sandman, the same, the original Sandman trades, which my mom still has some of them. Like they're, they're cool and they're old, but they're cool. <laughs> so, <laughs> so old people are the greatest, uh, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but like, you know, they have some old trades like that. And then DC kind of took the idea of, okay, these Vertigo books are selling well, we're going to do certain trades. So like, you could see when they first started kind of like in the 90s and 2000s era, like uh, Chuck Dixon's Nightwing, the original trades, they're not for every story. I would say there's probably like five or six of them of just kind of like the big story. So you have like the first arc, you have the hunt for Oracle, you have year one, you have like, you know, uh, bullets and Bloodhaven, like, you know, cer certain stories that were big, but not the whole run. So yeah. it's like, if someone wants to read those books, they can get the main idea of the book and then they could, you know, catch up from there if they need to with single issues not a terrible idea for you know redoing the modern trades i mean i know sometimes you just want to be able to read a whole run but if you're trying to which is fun. cut costs like i think that makes sense yeah yeah i think trades should be printed with more issues in mind too yeah like the marvel ones i think do them every like five oh issues now God. right like like I, yeah. I remember when i got the immortal hulk trades i got the first five trades and i'm like Oh, awesome. I'm going to have so much to read. I was done with it in like two days. <laughs> yeah. And it, it costs more money with that too. I feel like with Daredevil, like I got Bendis's entire run, which was years in three volumes. But for Thor, like Mighty Thor, which is, I, I'm going to say like 60 issues maybe, is like 10 trades though. It should be way less than that. It's less, less than 60 issues. Sorry. It's it's very small trades itself, and even Thor twenty eighteen, which is less than twenty trades, or twenty issues, is three trades. It doesn't have to be; it could just be one trade in general. Yeah. So, I feel like you just got to tr put more stuff in there, and people will buy it. Because having that that thick a book, like such a small book. Sorry if you're on YouTube. I'm kind of holding an example if you're watching. On but YouTube. yeah, you you pay like fifteen bucks for five issues, and it's just like this is so thin. Like I'd rather pay, you know. 20 mm -hmm. to 25 for like 10 12 issues i don't know it's it's uh, or even it's... bendis's uh daredevil you could pay like 30 dollars and you get roughly 30 issues in that yeah way better so yeah trade talk <laughs> <laughs> we th this episode has been like uh, i'm already thinking what's the title in, in my head and i'm thinking it's just all divergence <laughs> well last bit of news that we could quickly just go over batman and catwoman are getting new suits for the title bat cat Batman Catwoman ripped my top king with art by Clayman. Clayman said this book is going to be better than Watchmen and Venom. <laughs> weird comparison. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Venom? <laughs> yeah. Weird, weird comparison. He said it's going to be better than those two books. Uh, Batman's suit. He's kind of got a logo. It's hard to tell from his pose, but it looks like it goes right up to the cape itself. But it has still like the bat emblem on it. He's got gloves that, like, his gauntlets go up to, like, halfway through past his bicep. Uh, he's, his eyes glow blue, which is kind of cool. His belt is massive, which I guess makes sense. Uh, Catwoman, her outfit, it's hard to tell from her pose, but it looks like it might be a shade of blue in the front and then gray on the side. 
She's got little pouches for like a belt, which is great. It makes sense for her to put things in. Uh, she lost like the the weird armpit hold for her <laughs> current suit. So it's now more of a regular cat suit. And yeah, all along just new suits for this run. Probably not going to last past this run, but it's an interesting take on them, at least. But yeah, any thoughts on it? <laughs> uh, listen, I, I, you know, I, I, my main focus on Bat Cat is please don't let the dialogue be Bat. I, I, I'm not strong enough. No, Cat, Cat, you. <laughs> da, 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 da. Like, please don't. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Street Jokers, hey, the big comic that came out this week. We are currently, um, well, I can't see the timestamps, I guess. Oh, there we go. We're currently 50 minutes in and 30 seconds, and we're finally going to the comic. It's funny, we actually talked before this episode, like, man, this episode might be short, because uh, we only have one big comic this week. But no, <laughs> it's not short at all. Listen, you, you, you get me started on a rant, and uh, who knows where it's going. <laughs> So when this, this issue came out on Tuesday, both JD and I go to comic stores where we get our comics on Wednesdays. I traveled through my city to different comic stores to pick this up on Tuesday because I was just too excited and didn't want to see spoilers. This issue was leaked like a week beforehand. I didn't see any spoilers, did you? I did not see any spoilers, but uh, I did see people post about spoilers in the sense of like saying what they didn't like about it. So. I knew that it had to do with Jason and Barbara. And from there, I kind of made the two and two connection. connection in my head. So I had a feeling what it was. And when I saw it, I was like, like, I literally was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, I didn't see any spoilers, but I heard it was controversial. And I thought Batman was going to kill. <laughs> that, that's what I thought. But then uh, a friend of mine, I can't remember what his name is. Dang. I can't remember who said it, but it was in a group chat that you're also in. <laughs> Of someone in our group chat was just like they kind of hinted at this new 52 i'm like they hinted at batman killing someone i was so focused oh, on yeah, that. that that's exactly what it was that that put put the two and two together for me because i was like it's about jason and barbara and i, I think it was dad who said that didn't he that it was like uh yeah new 52 and i was like wait batman what, what was it batman eternal or one of them had jason batman and eternal had a tie-in a red hood and the outlaw tie-in to uh death of the family or sorry, City of Owls. So 2012, we're talking. City of Owls came out. There was a time from Red and the Outlaws which had Jason go to Gotham to help defend Gotham with Batgirl. At the end, they're sitting on a bridge. And uh, Batgirl tells, asks Jason like, if he wants to spend the, place at, to spend the night at her place. And Jason's like, sorry, Babs. I'm no Dick Grayson. He says something like that, and he walks away. And, and that was it. There's another. I, I thought, also, did it, yeah, didn't in Batman Eternal didn't they also like, have Jason having a crush on Barbara or something? That's another one. Jason admitted that he thought that he had a crush on Barbara, but Barbara was always too focused, always staring at Dick Grayson. So he's like, ah, I'm no, I'm no match. And in Batman and Robin Eternal, another series, Jason admitted that he had a crush on Barbara when he first came back to when he first came back to life. Wait, insane thing. So it was hinted at three times. Uh, be- all I can say. Yuck. <laughs> Disgusting. So for those uh, listen, who don't know listen. what we're talking about, real quick. perhaps it's the Dick Grayson purist in me, but Jason and Barbara is terrible. Listen, <laughs> listen, I you know, if you prefer Dick and Starfire, yeah, maybe you have Babs going somewhere else, but I hate, 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 hate with a capital H the the focus in the post 52 era of we want to make Jason Todd so much like Dick Grayson. Cause it started in 2011 when you gave him Roy Harper and you gave him Starfire and Starfire was kind of the love interest. You basically tried to be like, Hey, you guys like Dick Grayson 2.0. Here's and it's uh, like angry and Dick it's, Grayson. And it's like, okay, that, that doesn't really work. And then this terrible. So for those who don't know what we're talking about, I guess we'll talk about this segment first. <laughs> even though it's the end of the issue uh jason goes through some traumatic stuff that we'll go to her later on but through comfort and solitude jason red hood and barbara batgirl kiss so that that's what we're talking about here and i will say right off the bat i didn't mind it oh god <laughs> what i didn't mind it i thought oh, it was all right my, oh you know? you're oh god 
<laughs> Imagine your ex girlfriend kissed your brother for comfort. <laughs> Disgusting. Okay, well, don't say it like that. <laughs> That's what it is. That's what it is. Dick Grayson okay. and uh, Barbara Gordon is Dick Grayson's ex boy ex uh, boyfriend, mm-hmm. and Jason Todd is Dick Grayson's brother. She kisses his brother. Sorry, it's how it is. Disgusting. Terrible. Okay. I will explain my reasoning here. Jason went through something so terrible. At the start of this issue, Barbara was angry at Jason because, you know, in issue one, he shot a Joker. So she's angry, but then when they find him and they see all these traumatic things that Jason has been through, she has empathy towards him. Then you get to the point where Jason, she brings Jason to her home, which isn't a romantic gesture at all, right? She brought him there because she knew that the Batcave might not be safe right now. Let's bring him just to a regular place so we can heal up while Barbara and Batman go back to you know patrol so within this moment jason he takes a shower barbara comes home and he starts to talk about how he doesn't think anyone cares about him like he thought that he was supposed to die in that moment and that he he felt so weak and like he wasn't gonna get saved again but he did get saved and because of that barbara says that's because we thought you were dead jason including bruce by the time you were back you recreated yourself on your own as a red hood and we all wish we had been there for you jason says no one has ever said that to me. And Barbara says, well, I'm saying it now. And she puts her hand on his hand and they kiss. But right after they kiss, she pulls away and says, we shouldn't have done that. It was just like a moment. It, w- it was a moment where they weren't thinking. It was a time of solitude. And I guarantee they're not going to date. They are not. If they date, I will hate that. They kiss and they're like, oh, we shouldn't have done that. And Jason's like, I'm sorry. And she's like, no, I'm sorry. Let's just get back to work. Like it was, it was a moment and that's it. Nothing more. With context, it's okay, right? <laughs> I listen I, I get the context behind it and I get that it's a one time mistake and all that and it was more out of a place of comfort I still don't like it I get it still don't like it because okay, it's, just, you get it's it. so <laughs> weird to me yeah I understand it's a little weird but it, if like if I flip the page and they start to make out and everything and they're really going for it I'd be like okay come on but I flip the page and I, I was like oh good she pulled away and the first thing she says is we shouldn't have done that. I just wanted you to know that I care. And Jason says, I've never felt like anyone cared. And she says, I'm sorry about that. I really am. Let's get back to work kind of thing. I, I just, I really wish it wasn't a kiss because like I said, the ex-girlfriend kisses your brother is like the, the main feeling that I'm getting here. And it's, yeah. I posted about this and in my comments section, a guy was talking about how the kiss was awful. And I'm like, I didn't mind it. He said, he may came up with a good point. It would have been better if it was a hug. Uh, well, that's not, I was literally just thinking that now that like, I wish it was more of like a warm embrace as opposed to a kiss, because I feel like a kiss has so much more value to it, especially in comics where the kiss is King, you know, the kiss panels, you know, everything. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I 100% agree with that. Yeah. So if she hugged, I think I agree. It would have been more powerful. And maybe when she hugs, Jason breaks down in tears kind of thing. That would have been really, Oh, I got chills from that. <laughs> that would have been really good. <laughs> But no, instead it was a kiss and a pull away and kind of like waking up, like, let's get back to work kind of thing. I don't mind. Gr- I, granted, af- after three Jokers, this will never be even touched again. Um, you yeah, know, like they'll, probably not. They'll never even talk about it again. I, I'm just waiting for the day that, you know, in some, you know, form of media, whether let's say, let's say Titans, for example, Titans is bringing on Barbara Gordon and they have Barbara they Gordon are. and Jason Todd in a relationship, right? Mm-hmm. Let's let's say that for all sakes that happens, then they're gonna okay. be like, well, well, look at the comics that happened, and it's gonna oh, be like, oh god, yeah, we're gonna see those comments. <laughs> oh, no, happened no, in the comics <laughs> for a panel in the bottom right corner of a page of a one. Yeah, yeah, but I don't know. <laughs> ultimately, I'm not a fan. I do get it. I do get why it happened. It's just mm. ultimately not a fan. It's the Dick Grayson Pierce than me. I I admit it. I'm biased, but was not a fan. But I I do at least like that they pulled away after, and it wasn't like a full makeout because. When I had heard the, the thing in the group chat, my mind immediately went to, oh, God, they're going to make them either make out or they're going to make them in a relationship. And I'm like, why, Jeff? Why? I love yeah. you, Jeff. Why? <laughs> I think he handled it well for what it is. Granted, I didn't see it coming. So when I read it, I wasn't like, oh, my God, this is what people were talking about. Actually, when people were talking about the controversial thing, I thought it was the start of the issue with uh, Joker and his like wife and son, which yeah, that may was, not exist. Yeah, so so what's up with that i was uh so yeah i guess we'll go go to that scene now so the issue starts with joker like coming to a house and saying honey i'm home 
uh, there's this woman there saying, hello, dear, like dinner's ready and like puts dinner plates on the table and then calls a boy down named Junior, I guess. And they yeah, have and, dinner together. And, and she's very nervous the entire time with like everything she says, like she's tripping on her own words. She's like, I'm, I'm, so, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, baby. But, but, but you know, your father's going to be, he's going to be, be upset if you don't come down. Like, like the way she's speaking, she's clearly like very nervous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and the son himself, very much looking like a killing joke before he was the Joker. Yeah, well, it actually kind of reminds me of a Gary Frank, uh, like Joker, the way it looks, right? Yeah, yeah kind of. With the, he does have a similar kind of kind of like with the high fade lines. like that. Yeah, uh, he's got like the the kind of crazy hair in a way, uh, the freckles and the thin face with the tie, like the bow tie, and he, he reminds me of Killing Joe Joker, which means this is probably Killing Joe Joker. But then you see on a few pages later that he's actually eating like dog food in an empty room with like on with a table with a mannequin and a teddy bear so it's like a, it's a dream to him but is this a dream or is it a memory well well so what i was thinking is if this is the killing joke joker in killing joke his he wife pregnant. is pregnant mm -hmm. so maybe this is kind of like the vision of what he wanted for his life the perfect oh, family with I the like junior, yeah. right? His wife was pregnant, so this is what his kid would have been like. And that's—I mm -hmm. don't—I don't know if she looks like what Joker's wife looks, or before his Joker looks like, like the wife looks like before he turns, before she dies, right? Yeah. I, I don't know what she looks like, but I was—I was when I was reading the issue, that's what I thought it was—a connection to. Yeah, in although Killing Joke came out thirty or so years ago in DC timeline, it's probably been ten years, and that kid looks about ten years old, so. Yeah, that would make sense. Maybe what could have been, but in the end, we don't know if it's a dream. I'm guessing dream, but it could be a memory, if anything. Uh, moving on, I guess the next scene is just Barbara getting angry because you know Jason shot Joker, and Batman's reaction to this not what I expected. More calm, more yeah, pathetic. Barbara explains to Batman that Jason killed Joker, a Joker, and Batman's just like. It's cool. <laughs> you know? if anything i expected the roles to be reversed where it would be batman being the hard ass about it and barbara being like well you know jason did this you know mm -hmm. so i was i was actually kind of surprised by that um and then uh visiting joe chill in the uh asylum uh chills literal chills um <laughs> it was it was it, it was cool to see the you know jason Fabox take on the waynes getting killed i thought that looked really good and then mm -hmm. um yeah um i like how batman was a little afraid of visiting joe chill he goes to the cell and he says like you know who <clears throat> you know who i am <laughs> like he, it's a comic book so we don't know the voice but it sounds like maybe his voice was quiet or cracked <laughs> yeah <You> know, who? <laughs> yeah <laughs> where are the other drugs going yeah um <laughs> he's clearly uh, it's co college humor batman for whoever doesn't know uh they have a bit on batman finding his voice brilliantly funny uh <laughs> Anyway, uh, Joe, it turns out Joe Chill is in the hospital wing and that he has cancer. age four lung cancer. Mm -hmm. So uh, he's pretty much a goner. Um, we see Red Hood going out on his own in a creepy, creepy pool scene where this, I, yeah. I, thought those, I thought those were all mannequins in the pool. Oh, I didn't. I knew they were bodies. I flipped them. Oh, I thought they were all, well, yeah. Well, because Joker had the mannequin in the beginning pages. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought it was like more mannequins. And then when one jumped out, I was like, oh, okay. Um but but anyway, uh, he gets the the hood knocked off of him, and uh, he's like strapped naked to a chair while the original Joker's uh, kind of beating him up. And I, I kind of like the line where Joker was like, uh, was like, uh, I'll I'll let you in on a secret about the Joker, boy. It hurts when I laugh because I just imagine Hamill reading that where it's like a very like kind of like oh yeah jokey voice for the first part, and then like the you know how Hamill goes into the deep voice for like deep, serious things. yeah like like I expected it like that. So that's how I heard it in my head, and I was like, oh, that's awesome. Well, um, let's go back for a second to that pool scene though. Basically, you flip the page and you see thirty plus bodies in a pool, all Joker eyes, just like unconscious, but like slowly coming back to life, almost like zombies in a way. And that the water's is all acid. Yeah, that is terrifying. Like, that's a very terrifying picture. Alone, um, one of the, like the scariest scenes I've seen in a comic. I think it's like horror movie in a way. And Jason even he has fear in it, as the first one grabs his leg and he, he see like fear in his face as he pulls the trigger, but he's out of bullets. But it doesn't really matter because then that guy goes unconscious again before he gets kidnapped and back to uh, 
reliving his traumatic memory of being beaten with a crowbar again. Yeah, and and Joker's point of there's always got to be three and kind of making Jason the third Joker where he makes the smile on the Red Hood uh, helmet. I I thought that was very interesting. Uh, Mm -hmm. He's basically saying, like, you should die again, but this time come back as a Joker. Yeah, and and beating the crap out of Jason. Uh, I think one of my favorite panels is uh, when when Jason gets hit in the head and the the helmet, like, cracks in the eye. And you can kind of, like, see the pain in his eye, but still, like, the... The red hood has like the big smile. Yeah. Like I thought that was a very well drawn panel from Fabok, even though they're all well drawn panels. Yeah. And he says in like a weak voice, like, you, you better make sure I s- stay dead this time. And then Joker just says, Oh, why would I do that? I'm rooting for you, kiddo. Well, I hope you rise up and prove us wrong as the Joker and hits him one last time. Uh, I, I got to say, Babs breaking in right after that might be one of my favorite panels of Babs like ever. Like, that was so cool. Just kicking the door down, anger in her face as she runs in screaming Red Hood. Batman's like, could have done this quiet. Like, a bit more quiet. <laughs> then the the zombie Jokerized characters come out again, and it looks like some of them straight up die in a way. Batman thinks there are more Jokers at first, too. Yeah. But uh, but he says, oh, well, great, more Jokers. But Batgirl corrects him, like, no, they're more victims. And so... I, I like the idea of them being pulled away and they reach out and grab each other's hands to escape. Yeah. Then the Batmobile comes in, kills one of them as it, like iron bar goes through him and he slowly dies. As he says, like, no, not Jason, starts laughing and then slowly dies. Eventually they find Jason reliving his traumatic memory and we get the emotional dialogue between pain, uh, am I all right, just terrified. And then eventually he goes to Batgirl's apartment and we get the kiss scene. Yeah, and then um, after we get the kiss, you know, there's the whole breakdown of like, why does Babs keep all her old stuff, the wheelchair, the books, the old calendars and stuff, but it, she said it's help, a part of what helped her get past the pain is kind of like knowing that it was all there. So uh, it, was, it was pretty interesting. And then, um, and, and then you get Batman in the Batcave going over stuff on the three Jokers. Um, interestingly enough, they, they, when they show the Jokers, they do the order of one, three, two. Oh, I don't know if that means anything. I just thought a little odd, right? Yeah, you're right. That is odd. You get the criminal, which is number one. Yeah. Killing joke. I think right with the hat. Mm -hmm. And then you get number three, the clown, which is the red hood Joker, which is, uh, I don't know. They they contradicted each other. Actually. Yeah. And then the last Joker is the comedian number two with the, with like a knife. I, I don't know. It, it was a little odd to me. And then uh, uh, Batman looks at a globe and stares at Alaska as uh, we get lots of lines about things being chilly. And uh, the Joker's got Joe Chill and he's got a camera out and he says, uh, it's time to finally confess, Mr. Chill. Why did you really kill Thomas and Martha Wayne? And that's where it ends. So Joker revealing is the on the Wayne's murder. It's always, you know, plays into the concept of Joker knows who the who batman is and uh well he does but has he always known kind of thing which i don't know how i feel about that i like in a scott snyder's new 52 batman run how he didn't want to know who batman was there was a scene where bruce wayne visits him in prison and does the batman voice and joker immediately turns away and just doesn't look he doesn't want to not that he doesn't care who batman is but he literally doesn't want to know it would ruin his fun so I don't know how I feel about that, but I guess we'll wait and see. I don't I'm not think I'm the biggest fan of the Joe Chill stuff, but I liked it a lot. Yeah, I I I think I liked issue one better, but I thought this issue was still pretty good. Mm-hmm. It, it's weird. It doesn't feel like this is two thirds of the way done, you know? Like Yeah, I feel like there's a lot to go, but no, we have one Which is the same way I felt with Doomsday Clock, if you recall, when we were talking about Doomsday Clock, I think going into the last two issues and then the last issue, I was like I feel like there's still so much story to be covered. And there was. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm curious how this one's going to end out. I, I truly hope that it, you know, ends strong, but we'll, we'll see. It was actually the same for me for um, the last issue, the Flash for Williamson's run. Because remember, the second last one ended with Barry and Reverse Flash just running at each other. I'm like, how is this going to wrap up the whole run? But it did very well. So I guess we'll have to wait and see. I mean, these issues are bigger than your average issue, and we have one more month. I'm looking forward to it. What do you rate the issue? 
Uh, I think I give this one an 8.5 8. out of 10. Um, you know, mm-hmm. I, I think it was good. The art, you know, is still killer. Uh, the story is still interesting. I not a big fan of the Jason Vav's kiss. I know. And uh, <laughs> I, I pretend I do not see as I go back to read uh, the hunt for Oracle. But, uh, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's still a very good issue. So 8.5. I liked it a lot. I didn't mind the, the kiss scene. So I guess I'll, I'll give it like a nine. I thought issue one was a little bit better, but I like the darkness of this. I like the, the empathy on fear and I'm so excited for issue three. <laughs> I think in the end of 2020, this will be my favorite comic of the year. Yeah. Uh, by the way, since this is the episode of all divergence and uh, I'm going to diverge some more. Um, have you decided what books to send in to Jeff? Oh, yeah. So for those who don't know, CGC, the comic grading company, will be doing a signing for Jeff Johns, uh, writer, uh, Jason Fabok, and I think Brad, Brad Anderson. Anderson. Yep. Yeah. The colorist for Jason Fabok's work. Uh, you can send in your comics. They'll sign them for you. And they'll also grade your comics. So see how good quality they are. Put it in a plastic slab so it will never be touched again and possibly be worth a million dollars in the future. <laughs> Probably not that. <laughs> no. Um, I will be sending issue one of Three Jokers in, I think, or issue three. I'm going to wait till issue three is out. I'm going to see which one I like better out of the two, or if issue three has like a huge reveal, I'll do that one. Um, yeah. Probably just the uh, regular covers, or like the regular Bat Family covers. I really think it would look good with the, the Batman face signed. So sending yeah. that one in for sure. Um, I might send in the first appearance of Jessica Cruz for Jeff Johns to sign because I have a feeling she's going to go way really far. A hundred percent. Yeah, that would be good to have a signature for because I have her first appearance. And for third, I don't. I'm not sure. What What about you? So uh, I haven't posted about this at all yet. I was thinking about doing a post on the comic book hunters, but I may wait until I get it slabbed. Uh, but I. Finally have uh, gotten the crown jewel of my Flash 1987 right. collection being the Flash 197, the first appearance of Zoom, first mm-hmm. part of Blitz. Uh, I got uh, – so one of my followers sent me a DM, and he's like, hey, I, uh, you're looking for Flash 197, right? And I was like, yeah. He's like, oh, I got an eBay link. And I, I've been – some people have sent me eBay links before because they know I was looking for this comic. And they're like, oh, you know, uh, take a look at this. And usually it's just too expensive. But uh, he sent me this link, and this guy was selling for $40. Uh, it was – it was Flash 197 and uh, randomly enough, uh, New 52 Flash Annual 4. I don't know oh, why nice. he included that. <laughs> I'm like, okay, this is a random issue. But So I was like, 40 bucks? I was like, or no, it was more than that. It was probably like 60 bucks, but I offered him 40. Because I was like, I, I sent in an offer and I'm like, he's not going to accept it, but whatever, I'll just send it in. Mm-hmm. And he accepted it. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I was at work. Uh, I sent it in while I was at work. I was like, whatever, 40, he's not going to accept it. I don't care. And then he accepted it. I was like, well, that took me by surprise mm. <laughs> i was like maybe i could have gone lower but anyway uh yeah so i got that uh and i just received it in the mail uh about two days ago uh looks very nice uh, it's weird it had 7.5 written on it like on the plastic slab oh, like fe- that it, or like the plastic sleeve rather that yeah, it came not the in actual cover huh. yeah so that so that they I, I guess whoever sold it thought that it was a 7.5 Listen, I don't know too much about grading. I inspected the book and I sent it to some friends of mine who know a little bit more about grading. Yeah. They were thinking it's more in like the 8.5, 9.0, maybe 9.2 range. So okay. I think maybe I may have gotten a steal because he thought it was in worse condition than it was. Really, it's got just one little stain on the back. So oh, other than that, the it's- The stains in, are pretty bad though. They... It, it's, it's like, a, it's a little tiny while. Well, I'll send you a picture of it when we finish recording. It's very small. Okay. It took me a while to notice it actually because I was going through it. I was mostly looking for like, you know- uh paper like you know cracks like, and stuff yeah, seals and, and fine like ticks yeah. and all that so i was looking for like what was off about it and mm-hmm. it's really just that on the back so i was like hmm, maybe this is better yeah. than 7.5 but anyway uh since jeff is doing that i want to get him to sign that because that, that's going to look so awesome it's the mm-hmm. cover where zoom is going like right at the camera so seeing you know jeff john's signature on that's going to be and awesome the golden the slab. slab yeah that'll be nice and uh and then the other two i want to send in are the modern ones uh batman three jokers number one with the bat cover the Batman cover and then uh, Doomsday Clock number one with the Rorschach uh, oh, holographic cover. That's the other so, one I'm going to do. Yeah, the Rorschach holographic cover for Doomsday Clock number one, I think. Because that's going to look cool and it's the first appearance of, you know, all the new characters from Doomsday Clock. So mm-hmm. for sure. And that's, you know, maybe if they ever become anything one day, you know, that's cool. Yeah. I also might do Swamp Thing Winter Special for Fabok. That's one of oh, my yeah? single issues, I think. So I, I wouldn't mind doing that. 
That would be cool. Yeah, maybe. I'll have to, I'll have to look up my whole collection because I have a lot of Jeff John books and a lot of Fabio books and probably more Brad Anderson books than I thought. So, yeah, well, he does uh, Faybox colors. Does he do anyone else's colors? Gary Frank. Oh, Gary Frank. Yeah, I think he does maybe a few more, but Gary Frank for sure, yeah. So he did Doomsday Clock, so he could also sign Doomsday Clock. Yeah, I didn't even think of that. Wow. Yeah, I didn't think of that either, but he probably will because they yeah. will probably just assume that you sent it for both. Yeah, I'm looking forward to doing that, actually. I'm going to wait one more month, and I'm going to send it in probably the week that Three Jokers issue three comes out. Yeah, I know nothing about sending in CGC comics, so I'll probably wait till Hunter sends it in and uh, ask <laughs> I've done two. it before. Hey, man, can I see your homework? Yeah, just change up the answers. Yeah, yeah no problem. Yeah, basically. <laughs> it's pretty simple. That, that's what it's going to be like. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm so excited to send in the books. Like I had, since I got Flash 197 in the mail, I put all three of them next to each other of the books I want to send in. And I took nice. like, a picture. And like just seeing like the Batman face, the Rorschach face, and the... Uh, zoom face zoom all next face. to each other i'm like that's gonna look so cool with signatures and slabs mm-hmm. for those who want to get into this go to the cgc's website all the information is there look on youtube how do i send in cgc comics so that's what i did when i sent in uh, the amazing spider-man 16 and tales of suspense number 49 which is what i sent in to get signed or not signed just cgc slabbed yeah it's pretty complicated to be honest but if you watch a youtube tutorial just they could walk you through there's a few online I watched one. It helped so much, but it takes like roughly 30 minutes or so. So it, it takes a little bit, but it, it's worth it in the end. Yeah. I'm going to be leaning on Hunter here because I, I have no clue what to do, but this yeah. will probably be, this will probably be my first submission. So I'm, I'm very mm-hmm. excited. So it's a good three to get back. Yeah. One thing that's a little weird is uh, 1975 and up. If the comic released from like 1975 to today, it's considered a modern comic. So yeah. that was a little, odd <laughs> yeah um, but but that also determines the cost of grading it now it's different for the signature series because they have kind of set prices so i think uh, what was the price i think it's like one what is it 130 or 140 to get the three of them to sign three jokers like and that. then yeah, i think it's 80 individually for jeff so mm-hmm. it'll be a nice little chunk of change spent but i'm i'm very excited to do it and i'm happy to do it uh the, to me the most nervous thing is sending those in the mail oh god i'm terrified <laughs> It's fine. It'll be fine. Mine, mine took about two months and they're all good. Yeah. But yeah, um, I guess real quick before we end the episode, there's just one thing I want to mention on Red Hood. Hello. Yeah, yeah, no, go ahead. Uh, well, two things actually. One, Roy Harper's in this issue, like a time-traveling Roy Harper. I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, the only really dialogue he has is he just joins for a fight for like a few pages and then he goes back to his time. But before, when he goes back, uh, Jason calls his name. He's like, Roy, and he turns around and goes, oh, hey, what's up? And he goes, you you forgot this and gives him his hat. And he's like, all right, well, see you in the future. And then Jason just goes, absolutely. And then walks away. So, oof. The dialogue was a little worse than that, to be honest. I just don't want to say it. Well, first off, he says, hey, future Jaybird, what's up? So, uh, you know, you get the idea. Uh. Yeah. Um, one thing that's a little weird last or two issues ago bizarro came face to face with trigon and they're gonna fight bizarro kills trigon which is a little odd to me i feel like that's a little that shouldn't happen trigon being like the god of the underworld (laughs) and bizarro being a superman clone but they fought and bizarro won and the issue ended with bizarro choosing to be king of the underworld so he chooses that because if he if there's no king then the demons of the underworld will just go to earth and kill everyone. So he's like, oh, I'll be king. So the issue ended with him sitting on a throne, which was kind of weird. There's one issue left and then Lobdell's done. So, you know, <laughs> give it like a five, four, maybe five. Batman Superman annual number one also came out. I give it like a five. It was just a filler issue of Mixie Pitaladic arguing who's better Batman or Superman with Batmite. That was the whole issue. So I was like, all right, well, filler besides that that's all the comics i read this week yeah uh, just real quick um the the batman joker war zone one uh it was basically just a collection of stories teasing what's coming in 2021 so uh the first story is kind of about joker versus bane and it's setting up some stuff for 2021 so mm-hmm. uh bane's return coming next year uh i thought it would be more of a wait before we see bane considering the way you know city of bane ended yeah i I, just, I felt like, you know, it probably would have been better to put some distance between it, but, you know, we'll see. Um, and then uh, we get the first story from John Ridley, uh, who is the uh, guy who's going to be writing Luke Fox's Batman mm-hmm. for that 
uh, series. Uh, he, he wrote a Batwing story. Um, I, I kind of just, you know, getting used to writing the character. It was interesting. So we'll, we'll see, uh, you know, if it goes. We'll see where he takes it. Yeah, where, where, where it'll go. Um, and then there's some, there were some other stories that kept saying, like, coming in 2021. One of which was uh, Spoiler and uh, Cassandra Kane, which is very nice because uh, Cassandra Kane's back in the Batgirl suit, which to me is, like, uh, I love her as Batgirl and Same. one of her stays Batgirl. So Same. Uh, the, the final panel was uh, – really cool between them and uh yeah they both had bats on their chest i like that so uh oh so, yeah, maybe, maybe more to awesome. be coming and and williamson wrote that one by the way so cool uh uh anyway there, there's one uh one more story uh it was about poison ivy basically the story ends with poison ivy calling herself queen ivy on a crown or on a throne rather and it said uh to be continued in 2021 Okay. Okay. <laughs> I guess we'll find out more with DC News Slate. I'm guessing a mini series about Ivy again. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking maybe like something to do with Harley, or maybe something uh, to be to be in the main mm. bad title. I don't know. I read a mini series actually when New Fifty Two was ending. It was six issues. Or no, it was it was in Rebirth. Maybe when Rebirth first started, or when New Fifty Two ended. It was like 2015, 2016. She had a six I, I, issue mini series. Like, I know. Bad. I know her and Harley had the one post Heroes in Crisis. I. I didn't read that one. I didn't read that. It one. started at like the same week as Flash Forward, but I didn't. Read no, that. I didn't read that. One. I think I read issue one, if anything. But Poison Ivy had a mini series, maybe six issues, and I read it, and I remember enjoying it too. I thought it was actually pretty good. It was before mm-hmm. Hero Story, though. So yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's the episode. <laughs> yeah, so uh, than episode I than thought. thought. In the episode that we thought would have like no time, ended up going uh, a little bit over. Who knows? Almost an hour uh, and a half. Yeah. Almost an hour and a half. Jesus. Uh, anyway, uh, if you're listening on iTunes, we appreciate a five-star review. If you're listening anywhere else, we appreciate a follow, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, just a reminder, Indiegogo, our comic, if you could help it out in any way, we truly appreciate it. Anything helps. Yes. And uh, even just spreading the word really helps. So thank you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's, that's the episode. So uh, for Hero Story, I'm JD. I'm Hunter. And thanks for being a hero. And remember, every second is a gift. Goodbye. What?